Welcome to Move Your Mind. My name is Nick Brax, and this is a podcast where we have real conversations with real people and give real advice. This is the ninth episode of the Move Your Mind limited construction series. We're doing this because every year 190 Australians working in the construction industry take their own lives, and construction workers are six times more likely to die from suicide than an accident at work. On this episode, I spoke to Kurt Warren, who's the National Health and Safety and Quality Manager at Hanson & Yunkin. Thanks so much for supporting Move Your Mind. If you'd like to join the Move Your Mind community, you can go to moveyourmind.me. And if you'd like to purchase the Move Your Mind book, you can go to nickbrax.com slash book. Kurt, thank you so much for making time this morning to come on the podcast. Really glad to have you on here, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for, for inviting me. Really good to be here and, and a subject that I think that needs, needs the conversation. So great. Appreciate it. Yeah, we we're talking just before, and you know, everyone I've had on here, I guess, and the reason we started it, it's, um, I mean, mental health in general, we need to talk about as much as we can, but it really does need a conversation and it needs more work needs to be done in, you know, what we can all do to try and help in that in the construction industry and to just get these, you know, stories out there and, you know, delve into all of the, um, you know, looking for solutions of how we can improve the industry. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree with you. Um, so before we, we go into it, are you able to just give a bit of a, a background on yourself and sure. um, where you've come from and yeah, what, you, what you're doing now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, my, my background, I always tell people I'm a, I'm a tool maker by trade. Um, I, I left school when I was 15. I absolutely hated school, wanted absolutely nothing to, to do with it. Um, and, and I started my apprenticeship. Um, in a small engineering company here in, in Sydney. And, and I spent four years in, in, in my trade and, and the catchphrase we, we used to use was we make round things square and square things round. And, and I got to the end of my apprenticeship and, and being a fairly ambitious sort of young man that I was, I thought to myself, am I gonna spend the rest of my life making round things square and square things round. And, and I, I just couldn't settle on, on that. And so I looked, looked a bit broader and uh, I was fortunate to, to get a role at uh, ANSTO, um, which is Australia's only nuclear reactor um, at Lucas Heights here, here in Sydney. And it was as a trades assistant um, working in their development workshop with scientists, engineers, doing amazing sort of projects in, inside the reactor. But I think that's where my, my safety career really started. Um, you can imagine walking into the likes of, of a nuclear reactor, um, being a high reliability organisation, you're just thrusted upon uh, you, you, yourself and everyone around you, this, this concept of safety. And being in that small engineering environment, that word barely even existed. And like lots of tradesmen, you have the, the scars and the stories uh, to, to talk about where you've you've had uh, near misses and it just becomes sort of culturally um, norm and mm. and almost a, a rite of passage to to put that that blue collar on and the steel cap boots but in that other environment of, of the reactor that was not socially acceptable and uh, I really warmed to that whole concept after sort of walking the, the last sort of four and a half years in, in a different environment. Cut a long story short, I, I, I worked at the reactor for, for seven years. I quickly moved into a, into a safety role um, as a health and safety representative for the engineering development workshop, went off to uni and, and started to study safety science and, and um, particularly around occupational health and um, absolutely loved every single moment of, of my time at, at ANSTO. But then I decided to move on. I went uh, to, to Qantas. Um, I spent uh, a number of years with, with Qantas, four years in total, um, really learning um, about aviation safety, people safety in, in that aviation environment, and, and being in, in a place where you, you're now uh, in an ASX listed company, which is very different to working for the federal government, which is providing a service to the Australian public. And so the nuances of that and, and starting to, to sort of learn the, the, the realms of, of, of business. Um, I moved on from, from Qantas um, and I went to um, Energy Australia at the time, as it was called, or Ausgrid, uh, as it's sort of referenced now. 
Um, state government entity, again, different sort of being long-term employees, monopoly market, um, and, and, and a transition phase of, of going into privatisation, um, multiple management systems, um, and really enjoyed that, that environment. Um, moved on from, from Osgrid, went to Veolia, um, which was the biggest company that I'd, I'd ever worked for, um, 370,000 employees in 70 countries around the globe, just a massive powerhouse. Um, and so it was really exciting to work in that sort of environment with, with a large multinational organisation. Um, I left Veolia um, and went to Langer Rook. And I can't speak highly enough of Langs. I went to Langer Rook to, to uh, particularly work in the space of safety differently. There was lots of, of conversations taking place about working differently and safety differently, but there wasn't many companies actually doing it. Um, and Langs were, were one of those few. And so I purposely went to Langs to, to get the opportunity to experience it and, and loved, loved every moment of it. I left Langs and, and which brought me to my time here at, um, at Hanson Yunkin. Um, Hanson Yunkin is a privately owned uh, business. We've been in business now for 104 years, um, multiple generation sort of family owned. I absolutely love my, my time here in, in, in Hanson Yunkin or HY as, as we refer to it. And I feel like I've sort of got this 20 plus years of of experience under my belt now to really um, play in the sand pit that that Hanson Young can allow me to to do and 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 sort of test and push and and and, and evolve. And I guess the other piece that's that's been a real big key key to to my um, professional sort of development, personal development, was I spent some time in the army as well, part time, um, and I spent eight years. Uh, as a reserve infantry soldier and uh, for four years and then in what was called Army Safe um, Defence Headquarters. And sort of living that, that sort of world as I did in my trade environment, coming up as, a, as an infantry soldier um, and then moving into more senior sort of ranks in, in the corporate end of town and, and understanding what that sort of military life is, is like in the context of risk. Um, and risk taking, which is very different uh, sort of culturally to, to what you would say socially acceptable in, in a civilian environment. So that sort of brings me to now. And uh, um, as I said, absolutely loving every moment at, at Hanson Yunkin and, and being able to do some, some really innovative and, and special things um, with the support of, of the business. Amazing. Well, yeah, thank you for sharing that. And, and super impressive. Like, yeah. Um, uh, you've had a very broad experience and, you know, a lot of, I guess, like you're saying, being able to bring all of that and have, you know, 20 years of experience to bring to the current role. It's like sort of so important and, you know, so great to hear. So no, I think it's, yeah, really, really, really interesting. Appreciate you sharing it. And um, yeah, I guess I've seen a little bit what of what you're doing at, at Hanson and Yunkel, um, Yunkin, sorry. Um, what, what, what can you give us um, a bit of a an idea about internally uh, some of the things you're doing when it comes to you know mental health, well-being, safety, that area? What what are some of the initiatives that you guys are putting in place? Yeah, yeah. Well, I I, I normally sort of start this sort of introduction into the world of of Hanson Youngkin when when I met um, our CEO Peter Salverson. And, right. and the first time that I, I, I met Peter, uh, he, he said to me that we're ready for our next step in, in safety, environment, quality, but I don't want to do it with more rules, checklists and mm. procedures. I, I want to do it with, with people. And people mean everything to this organisation and to Peter and to the, the, the broader business, including our board. And we're looking for some help to be able to take that next step with people. And we're just not quite sure how, how to do that. So it sort of takes me to um, my, my first sort of days within in the business and, and first couple of months um, when I, I went and had my first board meeting and, and the board asked me, what do you think about our organisation, Kurt? And, and I said, respectfully, I, I don't know your organisation um, yet, but I do know who does, and that is your people. 
And so why don't I come back and, and I share with you some insights around what our people are saying, and then I can tell you what I think about that and we can have, start to have that conversation. So cut a long story short, mm -hmm. we, we did a, 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 an activity, really basic activity around asking people, what do you think we should stop, start and continue to do in, in our business? And that was just whites of your eyes type conversations like this, very informal. And we would just throw that, that to, to, to people. And people would say to me, "Is what do you mean, Kurt, in the context of safety? And I said, in any context that you think that that needs mm -hmm. to be said. And the, the reality was is that we, we ended up with this huge sort of list of verbatim statements and insights from our people who really spoke honestly about what we needed to stop, start and continue in, in the business. And the analogy that I gave it is that we're going to hold up a mirror and we're going to show you the reflection of, of your business. And mm. that is what informed what we decided to do in, in our three-year strategy. We call it the HSEQ Roadmap to Greater Success, acknowledging that there's nothing broken. Um, mm. we, we've, we've been in business for 104 years. You, you have to respect and acknowledge that we're doing something right and that the peaks and troughs of, of construction. Um, are, are always there and we've weathered all of those storms including the recent ones of, of COVID and, and we're still here and, and still going strong and so the, our first sort of step was sort of starting to, to look at the concepts of safety differently and, and we quickly came to the conclusion that this has really got nothing to do with safety this has got to do with work and how we work and with, without going into all of the finite detail, um, that has really guided us in what we've done over the last two and a half years, including putting our, our safety management system on the internet. So it's free, open source, all of our IP, which we think is really important to be able to do in, in the world of, of, of safety. There should be no commercial gain from it. Um, we're, we're real, we're human, and we're working with humans, and we want to be able to put all of that information out there. So please, everyone, go and check out hyworkzone.com.au. Um, it's all open source. It's all there for you. You can see our strategy, um, our, our work differently principles, our learning experiences that we create to engage with those uh, work differently tools, and of course, our safety management system. And there's many, many more things to, to come in the future as we progress our strategy. That's amazing, mate. And well, yeah, we'll put that in the in the show notes, the um, the the site that you just recommended there so anyone listening um if you want to check that out there'll be a link in the notes for the for this episode but i think that's so important the point you're making there about um really going and actually listening to the people not complicating you know these internal you know initiatives that you're doing not making it another rigid sort of thing um for employees because i think that there's enough of that and you know i've seen so many companies where it's just ticking a box and how do we just satisfy that area and you know the the end result is it doesn't really help anyone. It's sort of it's like putting a band aid over something, or just you know there's no, it's not not thinking sustainably. It's not thinking about how do we actually look at changing a culture. And I think it really comes down exactly what you said. We got to we need to listen to the people. We need to then take what we learn from them and cater something that will give them what they're saying that they need it. They need and often it's not actually that complicated the stuff that needs to be done but what is complicated yeah. or not complicated but you know you need to take that step back and actually listen and then work out how do we do this you know how do yeah. we how do we implement something like that yeah well we we we, we say often within our business the the support functions uh which includes includes mine and and, and other departments of the business is that we're in support of the projects mm -hmm. and and the projects are where our people work, it's where the revenue is created in the business um, and everything that we do should be, should be in support of those projects, not in constraint. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, there's, there's different things that we need to legally abide by um, and, and do within our business. But my, my sort of take on that is, is, is that's the minimum. 
that is the minimum requirement to turn up and, and, and go to work. But um, we don't need to start at that point to say, you need to do X, Y, and Z to turn up. Mm -hmm. We turn up to do work and how do we do work? And then we need to, as a support function, check to make sure that that work is, is meeting the, 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 the legal requirements that, that are sort of upon us in, in doing business. Start after you've understood how you want to work, other than start with the framework of the Act, the regs, the codes, yeah. Australian standards, the international standards. There's just so much paperwork and, and others outside of our organisation telling us how we, we need to work. Um, but the most important um, aspect or insight into how we work is, is our people. And we should never, ever lose, lose focus of that and really understand where this company came from. And, and that's from grassroots level um, uh, uh, as a handshake deal over 104 years ago. It's, yeah, exactly. And it's why probably a big part of why you're still going and still where you are now and going from strength to strength because it's sort of I think often companies can lose some of those values they started with and if you can maintain that and you know maintain the culture it's really hard to undo a negative culture but if you can maintain it that'll carry through and it might you know like what you're talking about it might take more work and take sort of you know do, going that extra mile but that's going to help everyone long term that's going to be sustainable and also build you know like building um helping not just in the workplace but build sort of skills that are going to apply to the community and outside of the workplace i think it's really important so yeah, yeah absolutely yeah well i i think if i i look at the th the top three things that came back from our stop start continue um the the number one stop was stop doing task observations to meet a kpi so this mm. is where we prescribed a particular assurance activity um, that was connected to a numerical number. And yep. it was just driving people insane and driving the wrong behaviour and culture within, within the business. Um, the, the, up, the, the first start piece was um, reorganising our management systems mm. so that they're more mm. simplified and they reflect how work is, is actually done. Um, and the, the continue was, as you've sort of just referenced, continue leveraging the culture that we have with, within our business. It is the biggest strength of, of all. Yeah. Um, and it, you, you, you never stop working on it, but we, we started at a really wonderful baseline and, and that, that family connection, multiple generations of, of people who work here and long-term employees which uh, for a lot of construction companies, they don't uh, get the, the joy of, of realising that. that uh, and that was a bit of a shock for me coming here that um, mm. when, when you've been here 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years and, and beyond, like I it just I bump into all of these people that had been here for such a long time and, and it took a long, long time before I finally bumped into somebody that had something negative to say about the business, um, which uh, I think is, is rare from my previous experiences. Thank you so much for supporting Move Your Mind. We're expanding the offerings of the organization and we're tailoring everything we do to suit you guys and to try and answer to all of your needs and the questions that you send in. The book is available globally. You can find all of the links at nickbrax.com slash book. And we've just released the Move Your Mind community. We've currently got a men's community group, a women's community group, a general group. We're going to be lo loading up other groups. And you can find all of the links at moveyourmind.me. This group's been created based on the needs of what we've heard and learnt throughout running Move Your Mind. And we have live events. We've got courses. We've got huge amounts of value. The ability to share information, share ideas work in groups together to, to grow and share your learnings, to learn about different topics. You get email reminders. There's a whole lot of features in there. We're constantly updating it, and we're so excited to share it with you. You can find all of the information about it at moveyourmind.me. Yeah, I think that sounds like it would be very rare. So it's like, yeah, incredibly positive thing to, to hear. So um, yeah, I think that's an, an example. And, you know, putting, like you were saying, putting the, 
um, the safety or the, your tools out for free, the IP out to show other people to set that initiative, you know, that shows that you're doing it for the right reason. So I think it is important, it's needed. And, you know, it's it's something that from doing this podcast, from us looking into this industry, we've just seen how varied it is from, you know, the some companies that are taking the initiative like what you guys are and the some that really need to do more. I mean, what what's your view on the construction industry as a whole when it comes to, to mental health? Yeah, well, I, I, I think the, the construction industry is a great representation of sort of the, the, the pond of, of, of society. It, yeah. It's such a huge cross-section uh, representation and and the tier ones of, of the world that are turning over billions of dollars a year uh, to the Mara parts uh, that mm-hmm. could be in, in regional um, Australia. And we're, we're, we're last week doing something completely outside of the construction industry and now find themselves in the construction industry and, and everything in between. Yeah. So I think it's it, it's difficult to, to draw um, just purest trends from construction and say construction is is X um, mm-hmm. because it takes so many different shapes and, and, and facets. And, and then all of the, the support uh, industries that sit off the side of, of construction um, and including what sits above it. And to, for the vast majority of, of construction companies, they're, they're delivering this work on behalf of clients. And, and those clients take the, the form of, of private enterprise and, and, and government as well. And so I look at it as a, a really rich tapestry of, of, of society, that what role do, does the client take in, in this? What role does construction take in this at, at from tier one to, to the lower tiers of, of the world? And then also the, the impact that these construction projects have on families and communities. Mm. Um, we, we have a, a, a catchphrase in, in Hanson Youngkin that we build the next icons. We, we do not build something that just disappears into, into the ether. This is something that's a legacy that, that's, that's dropped in, into society in some shape or form. And so when we look at what we're doing in, in that mental health space, I think it's really important to, to contextualise that. Um, it's very easy to quote the, the sort of purest trends that, uh, that sort of show that the construction industry is, is very much disproportionate to the average um, Australian industry or, or society around the impacts of, of mental health. Um, but uh, I, I, I don't think it's just the, the purest sort of driver from construction. And we, and we need to look more broadly than just the, 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 the fences around our construction sites because it is, it is not, it is not a, a, a world that just lives with inside that, that hoarding or that, that ATF fence. Um, these are real people with real families, real lives, um, and and the challenges that that life throws at, at everyone, they bring it bring it to work. They take it home from work, and and this industry has the ability to to really affect it in mm-hmm. in many different shapes and forms. We we live and breathe by the current and next project, and and nothing is guaranteed, um, yeah. which which it is for for some industries. It, it's it's a constant, but for us, it it is not. And we've just sort of gone through the world of COVID, um, the, the, the impacts associated with that, um, out the, the, the war in Ukraine that's affecting our supply chain, the, the political issues that we, we're seeing in China. Um, these are all things that affect our, our world and, and ultimately affect individual real people delivering projects. My name is Nick Brax and I'm a storyteller who has dedicated my entire adult life to creating positive conversations around mental health. In recent years, discussions around mental health have become less taboo and entered the mainstream vernacular. I've delivered over 1,000 mental health seminars around the globe, including several TED Talks, and I believe we all have a story to tell. 
In my book, Move Your Mind, I cover my story and stories from people that inspire me, as well as insights from world-leading mental health experts. This book will help you to learn how to recognize mental health issues before they become a problem. Use your personal challenges as motivators, take ownership of your well-being, and create new daily habits that increase happiness and reduce stress. Yeah, and so yeah, like you're saying, it's not simple. It's not a there's no simple solution and you know i think a big part of it just comes down to you know what we're doing right now having these conversations get sharing stories raising that conversation in companies encouraging other people to speak out you know hear it like what you're doing again in 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 your organization is talking to the people i think it's just it's such an important thing because it is such a varied thing it's so nuanced it's not there's not a blanket solution for anything and not just in this industry when it comes to mental health anywhere it's like a ongoing you know day by day proposition and it's it's ever changing so i think really good points and yeah i appreciate you um sharing all of that i think it's been, been super insightful i'm sure our listeners are going to you know take a lot out of this um we finish every episode with five closing questions so hopefully won't throw you too far under the bus here pretty sure. <laughs> um these can be sort of whatever answers come to mind um, but the first one is what's what's your best childhood memory that comes to mind? Best childhood memory. I, I think um I I grew up in, in the Sutherland Shire or the Shire. So anyone that knows me, I always talk about the, the Shire. The um, Shire. And, and the Shire. Lord of the Rings. And, yeah. You're at, yeah, it sounds Lord like you're of at the it. Rings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and I absolutely loved growing up uh where I did right next to the, to the, to the bush um great family life with mum dad my brother um and just friends and, and just the simple things in life riding around on your your BMX with your, with your mates and going down in down into the bush and playing armies as as little boy and and just enjoying um just everything that the Australian culture has to to throw it at at, at young people um and and living a simple life um I, I've got two daughters myself uh, a six and, and nine year old and I just I sort of look at all of the things that are in their life now um that regardless of all your your might and want to to shield them protect them from the the, the exposure of, of life now in the digital world you can't stop it um and I sort of reflect on my own personal childhood that 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 never was something that entered entered my world it was really simple um fun honest life um and getting back to that i, I think can only ever do do good for people oh 100 you know it's it's crazy that's a whole another podcast episode on you know yes. what that's what's happened with that but it it is yeah. and i feel you know i feel fortunate as well similar to you grew up you know going and just have in a small town with friends you know you'd be in a park climbing trees kicking a football around getting up to yeah. mischief no yeah. screens you know if I wanted to see a friend I'd go and turn yeah. up on his doorstep or ring the doorbell or you know you, yeah. you had no other option or you might call from, from the home phone that was it so yeah um, coming home when the street light comes on that was yeah exactly the of, of that of that it was just wonderful the simple the simple things and I think it's still yeah. you know that's that's a it's a it's a real problem in society today. But anyway, we're not going to go into that because that's going to be, yes. we'll, we'll be here for another three hours. Um, yeah. So, sure. so the next one, um, what do you what do you think is one of the biggest burdens on mental health in society today? It probably ties into what we're just talking about. Yeah. Look, I I think there's there's just a lot of pressure on yeah. on people. Um, life is not as as simple as as it used to be. Um, there's life can be very pretentious now, and the, that expectation of of what what is good in in life creates a, a lot of pressure on on people. And we we talk of in the political space of that that cost of living of maintaining what what that looks like. Um, I, I think that creates a huge level of anxiety for for people. Um, I, I think one of the other things that I, I think we're, we're, we're missing in, in modern society is the, the ability to be resilient and, and what, what resilience actually looks like. 
um, what failure looks like, um, feels like, not just looks. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and the same as success, and and that's a normal human thing to have failure and success, and recognize that this is like physical fitness. I, I refer to it as mental fitness. And it is never a constant, the same as my physical fitness. And any professional athlete will, will tell you that they're never at their peak physical fitness all the time. They work so hard to get to that point so that they can perform on, on that day that you need to perform. But mm -hmm. bringing it back to sort of a, the average person, we're exactly the same. And we recognise what it takes to improve our physical fitness, but do we recognise what it takes to improve our mental fitness um, and being okay that it's not okay, but not sort of wallowing in, in the pressure of, of that, that that is just being human. And there are things that we can do to improve that fitness, to be able to deal with the pressures of life um, and be successful. And, and, and when you are successful, you, you recognise what, what that experience is, how it was created, and the opportunity to, to replicate it again. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, it doesn't happen by accident but being really consciously aware of, of what creates mental fitness. Um, and, and that can be different for every person. But, but having that, th those tools, the knowledge, the awareness of it um, gives you the, um, the, then the ability to actually do something about it um, and, and take some different choices and steps yourself. Yep. You know, I think it's a really insightful answer what you've said there. And we do, we live in a world now where, you know, a lot of quick fix, instant gratification. People don't want to show vulnerability. They don't want to go through discomfort. And it's, I think it's so true what you're saying. We need, we need to fail. Failing's healthy, you know, and it should be reframed. And, you know, I talk about that a lot where failing is actually learning. It's not failing. And that's where you're going to become more resilient. You're going to learn about yourself and if you just got what you wanted all the time, you won't grow. It's actually would be a negative. You need to yeah. go through that. It shapes who you are. It shapes your character. It shapes your Absolutely. point of view on the world. So it's just, it's, yeah. it, it, it's so important. Yeah. It's so and, important. and I think taking the, those challenges of life um, in, into sort of life experiences that, that build that resilience. So I, I think in my time in, in the army, um, and we, we, we had this, this catchphrase in the Australian infantry that uh, you train hard and fight easy. You, you, you train to the point to know what it feels like to be right close to that edge so that when you need to, you, you can actually do it and perform. And I, I sort of look at my time in, in the Defence Force as the hardest thing that I've, I've ever done in my life, both personally and, and in team environments. And I always just use it as my datum point now for, for everything else I do in my life, that there's, there's pretty much nothing that you can throw at me that's going to be as hard as what that was. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm not saying that everyone has to go and spend some time in, in, in the defence force, but you've got to find your, your own train hard, fight easy. And what, what, what is that? So that becomes your, your reference point of, of how you overcome how you did something that you thought that you couldn't do and, and prevailed um, so that when the next thing, which will come, it comes for everyone. Uh, it, it's, it's a guarantee that it's coming, that next challenge. You, you, you're fit, you're, you're capable of, of, of taking it on with, with confidence. Yep, absolutely, mate. I think very well said. Uh, what would you say is your personal definition of happiness? Oh, personal debt, my, my family, um, I think I could, they're just a, a, a representation of, of yourself and yourself is a representation of, of, of them. Yeah. Um, and that's what I strive for. Uh, and I think recognising that there is more good going on than, than bad and being able to leverage off off that that good 
is is, is a healthy thing. Um, yeah, so I'd say yep. notch it up as as the family. Absolutely. Uh, what would you say you're most afraid of? Oh, I think failure, which I think is a, a common thing for a, a lot of people. I, I, I think of the the sort of milestones, my personal life milestones that that I have, and and that extends into my family and, and for myself personally, professionally. Uh, I work hard for for that, and 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 I have since pretty much taking my first breath and you, you, you don't want to see those things not come to realisation. Um, yep. But I, I, it, it's a bit of a double-edged sword as well. I think it, it's healthy to have that, that fear um, so that it, it gets you up in the morning and drives you to, towards it. Exactly, exactly. It's sort of, it is. You, you, you don't want to, I mean, we should obviously not be in fight or flight all the time, but we do need some discomfort to motivate us. So, so it's a fine balance. Absolutely. Uh, so final one here, uh, what are you most proud of? Most proud of, um, I, I think I'm, I'm really proud of starting it at baseline. So I've, I've 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 sort of done that. I didn't come from from a family that was that had a lot of money, um, um, and I had to work hard uh, at grassroots sort of level. And my father really instilled that into me about working hard, um, learning what it's like to to work hard and experience and feel working hard, and and then what the the, sex, the, the success is that comes from it. And, and so as I, I sort of started this off, I always tell people I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a tradesman first and a safety professional second. And you never forget where you come from. And the yeah. same as my yeah. military career, starting as a private reserve infantry soldier. I hit the bottom of the barrel as, as it gets. <laughs> um, and I absolutely loved it. Um, and, and the same in, in, in my civilian sort of career as well. And as those years have sort of caught up with me, you take all of those experiences, you put those feathers in your cap, you, you, your mistakes, your successes, um, and, and you just build upon it. So I'd say to, to notch up um, coming from, from grassroots. I love that. And, yeah, great way to end. And, yeah, thank you for being so open for making the time to come on here and sharing, you know, everything that you've shared. And um, I'm sure the viewers, the listeners will get a lot out of it. So yeah, appreciate you making the time, mate. Absolutely. It was an absolute pleasure to be able to, to have the chat and, and a little plug for you, mate. I oh, love mate. <laughs> I love, love the it. book that you sent me. So I haven't finished it yet, but I'm, I'm well into it. Um, it. It's been a pleasure to, to meet you personally, uh, uh, really read and, and and look at some of the work you're doing and, and please don't stop, mate. You, you, you're doing some great work. I appreciate it, mate. I really do. So thank you so much for that. Not a problem. Take awesome. it easy. Thanks, mate. Thanks to Kurt Warren for joining me today on Move Your Mind. If you'd like to join the Move Your Mind community, you can go to moveyourmind.me and if you'd like to purchase the Move Your Mind book, you can do that at nickbrax.com book.